I woke up to a low battery voltage this morning. Fortunately, everything's okay. As you can see, I'm in the forest. It is absolutely beautiful here in cool, wonderful weather. Nice and shady because of all these trees. Lister's been enjoying the forest too as he face smashes the camera. It's what he does. Shade is great for staying comfy and cool, but it's not so good for my solar panels. Now, if you know me, you know that I am all about redundancy. I've got backup plans to backup plans to backup plans. Some may call me paranoid. Others may call me prepared. I'll leave it up to you which you think it is. Now, I knew what I was getting into, and I've been monitoring my battery usage each day just to stay on top of it. I already killed a set of batteries last year. I do not want to kill my lithium batteries. They are expensive. And I've seen that I am using a little more power each day than I'm taking in through the solar panels. So it's been five days since I've been parked and voltage has been going down a little bit each day. Last night I ran my heater cause it got kind of cold. And right as I went to sleep, I checked, I was down to right about 13 volts, which is on the low end for lithium. When I woke up this morning, I immediately checked my batteries and it was 12.8 volts, which is a bit under 20%. You can run lithium down to about 10, but I was approaching the danger zone. So here I was in my worst case scenario. So I started the engine. Sorry, it's a little dirty here, but one of the great things about the Ford Transit is the vehicle battery, the starter battery lives here directly under the driver's seat. This is why I set up my electrical here, my house batteries and my DC to DC charger and charge controller and all that other stuff is all back here. So I have an extremely short cable run from the house battery to the charger to the house batteries. What this means is when I started and ran my engine this morning, I was getting the maximum 50 amps of charging that my DC to DC charger will provide. I turn on the app and it told me its status was current limiting, meaning it actually had more than 50 amps available, but because it's only rated for 50 amps, it was limiting itself to that amount. That's not a problem. It's not that there's anything wrong. It just means that it was sending me the maximum amperage it possibly could, which is perfect. I ran the engine for about half an hour or so, and it brought my batteries up to about 13.2 volts. Soon to go down to 13.1 when I actually started using my laptop. I had a lot of work I was doing this morning, so that used a bit of power. But uh, that was enough to sustain me. So as far as worst case scenarios go, that's pretty good. Now here's the ironic part. I have a 2000 watt generator. I have a 20 amp battery charger in the van and I have a shore power outlet in the back bumper. So why didn't I just run my generator for an hour or two to top off my batteries? Well, ironically, this exact situation here in the forest at higher elevations is exactly where my generator won't work. See, it is carbureted, not fuel injected, and carburetors are sensitive to altitude, to elevation. So, unless I install a high altitude kit, which I haven't, my generator actually won't run up here. So I can't even use that. What I did do is roll my van forward from where you can say I've had it parked because of the rug there. That Lister is doing an excellent job holding in place. I rolled it forward into where there was a patch of sunlight about an hour ago. It shifted further forward. I don't feel good driving that far, but it got me a good 400 watts of charging for a little while, which did help. So I'm thinking between letting the engine run if I need to and chasing sunlight in the afternoon like I did today, I'll be fine for the next couple of days until I roll out of the forest. I'm only going to be here another couple of days before uh, heading back out to the desert. And between having good solar coverage again and the fact that I have 
Well, Google says it's a five and a half hour drive, so that's probably closer to six and a half or seven down to Sierra Vista, where I'm going to meet up with even more friends. So with that kind of a drive, that's going to top off my batteries no problem. So this is definitely not an emergency. It's just something I need to keep monitoring. Now, you certainly don't need the extensive, relatively high-tech systems I've gotten here for what you're doing, whatever it is. Most people have a much simpler setup than me. I mean, you know, look at Amanda over there. She's got a super simple setup. It works great for her, so awesome. If you've got a simpler setup like her, you know, same thing. Just uh, keep an eye on your voltage see what's happening, monitor your usage, and uh, just make sure you don't run out. And if you do, have some way to charge it. Know that if you're going to be in the forest for a while, your solar charging is going to be a bit limited. But if you've got something else, like the ability to run a generator or just plug it into your vehicle and run the engine, you'll be fine, just like me.